Welcome to our channel. My name is Ferdinand Nichols. I'm the senior pastor of the House of Freedom Ministries in Bridgetown, Barbados. And it's a joy to have you joining us again this morning. Uh, this morning in my country at the moment, I'm not sure where it will be, what it will be when you're viewing this video, but regardless of what time of the day it is, it's a joy to have you joining us on our channel at this time. A uh, very critical time and very critical juncture in our world. And we want to be, as believers, be able to address some of the challenges that as the body of Christ and the world, for that matter, are not only going to be facing, but are currently facing. And several of the threats that we will be facing. And how do we handle it? What is the plan? What is God's battle plan? Because we are in a war. This cannot be even argued or debated. It is clear from all of the activities around the world, there's significant civil unrest around the world. We are at war, at war politically, economically, socially, in terms of our philosophies and rights. Uh, everything seems to be in such an upheaval. And there must be an answer somewhere, uh, you know, in terms of how we address and how we as individuals and as believers, how we cope and how we handle the issues and challenges that we are facing on a daily basis. So we want to welcome you to this channel as we share with you today. As always, we would be deeply appreciative if you subscribe, if this is the first time you're visiting with us here on this YouTube channel, and for that matter on Facebook as well. We welcome our Facebook viewers. And uh, we also want to encourage you to subscribe here on YouTube and follow us on Facebook so that whenever we are online, you will be notified. And of course, we would appreciate getting that thumbs up from you. And in the comments, you can feel free to uh, post your comments here in YouTube and on Facebook. And of course, at the end of this uh, telecast, they're going to place our email address, hofbdos1997 at gmail.com. And they'll post it there for you that you can send us your emails, your requests, your prayer requests, or for that matter, subject matter you would like to hear us address in terms of this channel. And so we look forward to hearing from you. Again, a joy to have you joining us today in this YouTube Facebook broadcast. Now, for the last several months, we have been dealing with the matter of war. We are in a battle as believers. We are in a battle as citizens of our country for our freedoms, for our rights. We have gone through a very difficult period, uh, you know, in terms of what has been the so-called pandemic. We have been through mandatory lockdowns, mask wearings, mandatory vaccinations. Our freedoms and our liberties were infiltrated, suspended, removed uh, at the whim of governmental agencies, officials, and authorities. And so we are, we are going to have to be very vigilant as citizens and mindful. And of course, as you know, much of what we went through is now being exposed as having been misinformation, false information, lies, conspiracies, more than any conspiracy theory we have heard uh, announced by anyone. And what was thought to be conspiracy in the beginning, in actuality, has turned out to be the truth. The European Union is investigating the matter and finding much discrepancies with regards to the pandemic actions of governmental officials and authorities. In Australia, New Zealand, in the United States, everywhere, persons are standing up, investigations are underway, and there is much being revealed. What do we do in the midst of all of this as believers? We also are aware of the fact of a sexual orientation and gender identity agenda being foisted upon the entire world going through the UN and through other agencies of the United States, US aid and other agencies, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, seeking to impose a sexual orientation and gender identity agenda upon the entire world. What then is our actions and activities and responses as the body of Christ? We have landmark cases, one in the nation of Malta, where a person who was formerly a member of the LGBTQT uh, grouping 
gave their life to Jesus Christ and had a miraculous transformation. Uh, and there is significant effort on the way to prevent that ever happening again. Something called conversion therapy, where governments and, and, and the, well, don't let me just say governments, the LGBTQT2 plus community is seeking to ensure that under no circumstances will anyone who desires to go a particular direction or who was once a part of their grouping can ever change and find themselves, uh, you know, free of that particular aspect of life. The reality is that there are many testimonies being brought before us where persons before Congress and other environments are indicating that once they had done certain things, now they cannot re reverse the matter and they're living lives of literal hell. What in the midst of all of this does the believer do? What in the midst of all of this is the responsibility of the Christian? How do we engage this warfare in which we are, are presently operating? Now, one thing is sure. There are no accidents or tragedies on the planet. Everything is being very, very carefully orchestrated in the spirit realm and executed in the spirit realm. God is executing and planning. Satan is executing and planning. Therefore, what must we, as God's representatives, his legislative authority upon the earth, what therefore must be our response? Well, over the past several months we've been dealing with the matter of warfare the spiritual warfare in which we are engaged and the literal warfare upon the earth in which we are engaged there was a chinese general that made the statement along this line and he said if you know yourself and you know your enemy you're going to win every battle if you know yourself and you do not know your enemy you'll win on occasions if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy you're going to lose every time. And so it's very important for us to know who we are and to know who our enemy is, what our strategies and equipment is, what his strategies and equipment is as well. And so for the past several months, we've been looking at the whole matter of our enemy, his strategies, who he is, how powerful he is, what is his rights and so forth, what are the areas in which he can operate. And we have now recently started to look at the believer. The Apostle Paul, again, and I want to quote it, I want to go to it and read it for you. And I want to read uh, particularly from the, from the Passion Translation out of the book of Ephesians in chapter 6. And I'm going to be reading from verse number 10. And maybe if you have a Bible, you can turn to it and we can read it together. But from there, this is what the Apostle Paul expresses. And this is where we are today. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For there are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer, for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put on the truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on the holiness as a protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert. Then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor-sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. 
pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. So clearly, God has provided for us armor. He's provided for us weaponry. He has made it possible for us to be able to engage this battle and not just to engage this battle, but to come out victorious at the end of the day. Listen again to what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm reading from the third verse. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance to the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insists that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, hallelujah, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose complete obedience. Wow, these are some powerful verses for us as the believer. We have weapons of warfare. We have armor to protect us in this battle. Now what we need to know is what is God's strategy? What is God's battle plan? What weapons do we have and how do we prepare to use those weapons? And how do we use them? Certainly, one thing is sure. As we look at the armor, we can identify two pieces of armor that can be used both defensively and offensively. One of them is the shield of faith. I'm sure you've watched many a movie with the Roman soldiers and and other forms of that era of battle. And you would see the soldier holding up the shield, protecting him, and sometimes using it to bang the enemy, you know, and to be offensive against the enemy. And of course, you see that sword, which can be used to parry the blows, and of course, then to thrust a fatal wound into the enemy. And so we need to know how to utilize this weapon of our warfare, which the Bible identifies as the word of God. That word of God is found in our Bibles. And it's so important for us to be able to manage the word of God. In the 119th Psalm, and I believe it is verse 11, the scripture says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin against you. It is absolutely critical that we not only familiarize ourselves with the word of God, the Bible, unequivocally the word of God, the scripture tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in all uh, righteousness, so that the man and woman of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Every good work, not evil work, good work. So we have a weapon available to us that we can use, but we cannot be casual about it. If you go to warfare and you're casual about the use of your weapon, inevitably you're going to be killed. You're going to be defeated. And so we must learn how to manage that word. And the last time that we were together, we looked at the fact of reading and meditating on the word of God, not just to read it. You know, a lot of people pick up the word of God and they read it. But they don't meditate upon it. They don't spend time thinking, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to expand that word, allowing the Holy Spirit to give them a full understanding of that word. And not just in terms of some ethereal being that brings some thoughts into your mind. Today, we have many, many helps available to us in terms of dictionaries, concordances, commentaries. The Internet is filled with these uh, biblical helps that can explore original languages and give us a clearer understanding of what the Word of God is saying and a true view of the Word of God. I want to remind you that one of Satan's plans is to share with us things that are almost true. There is truth and there is almost true, not lies. It's pretty clear to identify a counterfeit bill. But those bills that are almost perfect, difficult to manage. 
And so it is in the in the biblical and spiritual realm. You're going to have to learn to be able to identify, discern between the truth and the almost true. And I want to say this morning, this this morning, that you are entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. Facts are realities. This is one of the challenges that some of the groupings in the world today face with their agenda. They want you to accept their opinion of things as facts. But no, that's your opinion. The facts are such, but the truth is different to your facts, to your opinion, I should say. And so it's important for us to know exactly what the word of God says, because there are those people in these groupings that are trying to use the word of God, even spiritual leaders, reverends, popes, pastors, apostles that are trying to use the word of God to justify their devilish, demonic and unholy attitudes and, and actions and functions and operations, even in churches. So we need to know what does the Bible say, because at the end of the day, the church is not the Hindu's idea or the Buddhist's idea or the idea of Hare Krishna. The church is the idea of Jesus Christ, who in Matthew chapter 18 said, I would build my church. He didn't say he would build yours, and he didn't say we would build his. He said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So Jesus is building his church. He's not building the Catholic Church, the Apostolic Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Nazarene Church, the Southern Baptist Church. He's building his church. And let us be clear on the matter. Nobody is building that church for him. He is doing it himself, personally engaged in that action. And so it is important for us to hear and understand what the word of God says. And so it's not just enough to pick the Bible up and turn the pages and read it. You've got to create mental pictures of what the word of God's saying. You've got to be able to cancel the ideas and thoughts of a woke environment and culture in which we live today. You have got to be able to cancel the lies. You've got to be able to cancel the almost true and be able to immerse your mind in the scripture so that when things come to you, you'll be able to successfully combat it by pondering through the entire council of God's word, not just what you pick and choose. The word of God has a lot to say about prosperity and God wants us to prosper. Don't let anybody fool you with anything different. Why can I say that? Because back in the book of Deuteronomy chapter eight, the Lord himself says, it is I that give you the power to obtain wealth so that I can confirm my covenant with you. So things to do with prosperity, healing, there are those who say healing ended with the apostles. Rubbish. I'm a personal recipient of a miracle, a miracle work of Christ in my own life, completely healing me of asthma, completely healing me of asthma. And other millions and millions of people who have received miracles from God, because that is a reality today. Nowhere does the scripture say these things have come to an end. And so it's important for us to know what the word of God says. But there's a second part to the whole aspect of this weapon of our warfare that God has required of us or in our training and our preparation requires us to become uh, more uh, au fait with and develop an excellence of the usage. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17 that we are to stand firm against the schemes of the devil and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that when we are attacked by Satan and his forces, we are encouraged by the word of God to take the word of God. We are to unsheath his truth, which we have been storing over time in our heart or in our mind, our arsenal, we have an arsenal available to us. Instead of relying upon our own clever logic or upon our own perspectives or opinions, we are to grasp hold of the only weapon God has given us to use in this manner, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Not your opinion, not my opinion, the word of God is the sword 
of the Spirit. What does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about that? What does the Word tell us about different subjects? And it covers every subject of life. But how does the reborn warrior take the sword of the Spirit? How do we do that? When the Scripture says, take the sword of the Spirit, what does it look like? to grab hold and thrust the weapon of the sword of the spirit into the heart of Satan's deceptions. What does that look like? Well, the Greek word translated word in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, speaks of the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema. That is the Greek word used, rhema of God. This word carries the idea of an utterance. That is, it's not enough just to read. It is not just enough just to get it into your head. Rhema of God refers to more than the written word, which is the Logos. It refers to the stated word, which is the Rhema. For the Bible to become a spiritual sword, we must quote it mentally or verbally. But to whom are we to communicate these scriptures? And it's important that we grasp and understand this. Otherwise, we will not be able to counter Satan's deceptions. Well, first of all, for the sake of salvation, we are told that we are to communicate God's word. That is to explain the gospel of the kingdom of God to unbelievers. Otherwise, they cannot be saved. God is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. In Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15, and again in verse 17, the scripture says this. For whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. I once heard that explained this way. Faith comes when you hear yourself with your own ears, speaking the word of God with your own lips. So there is of necessity the need to speak the word of God. Furthermore, for the sake of our sanctification, we are to communicate God's word to other believers. We are to fill the mind of the body of Christ with his truth. The Bible tells us again in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, which I quoted a moment ago, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good word. And again in Colossians 3, verse 16, let the word of God richly dwell within you with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. So it is very important for salvation. It's very important for sanctification. And then finally, for the sake of our own spiritual well-being and deliverance from Satan's oppressions, we are to quote God's word. We are to remind ourselves mentally or verbally of its truths. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothering, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So we must practice how to use the word of God, practice using the word of God, become more uh, professional, become a, a greater expert at the use of God. So the Bible therefore becomes a weapon in the hands of those whose testimonies pierce the very core of Satan's lies. To quote it to each to others and to remind ourselves of its truths is a major step toward victory in our struggle against Satan 
and his entire realm of forces. The Bible tells us again in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and I, and I want you to listen to what it says. A very powerful verse, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. The apostle is again speaking here. This is what he says. I'm going, I'm going to read it from the King James, and then I'm going to read it from the Passion. The Bible says this, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit are both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Listen to it in the Passion. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. So it is critically important, not just to read the word, not just to meditate upon the word, not just to get the word in us, in our heart. The Bible says, with the heart you believe, with the mouth you speak. And so it's really critical for us to be able to speak that word. And even if you can't speak it with your mouth, you can speak it in your mind. And some people have asked me, you know, how can you talk in your mind? And I've often said to people, okay, I want you to pray the, the Lord's Prayer, but I don't want you to open your mouth. And I want you to hear it being spoken in your mind. And you know, they've always come back to me and said, yes, I can hear myself speaking the word of God in my mind, although my mouth is not open. And the wonderful thing about it is that God already knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. This is what we have just read here in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And so it's important that we utilize the word of God. We quote the scripture. We are the legislative group of people upon the earth, the church, the ecclesia, given the authority and the jurisdiction on the earth. According to Psalm 115 verse 16, the earth belongs to man, not to the devil. When in Luke chapter 4, he is tempting Jesus, he says about the kingdoms of the earth that were given to him. He deceived Adam and Eve to give him the kingdoms. But through Jesus Christ, those kingdoms have been returned to the believer. And so we now have that power to legislate over Satan and his entire grouping, his entire forces, the power of the word of God and the dominion that we once had has now been restored. And so we need to use the word of God. And listen to what it says in Romans chapter 10 and in verse number eight. You know, the scripture is so clear on matters and we need to hear what it says. It says this, God's living message is very close to you, as close as your heart beating in your chest and as near as the tongue in your mouth. And so we must use the word of God. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, Luke chapter 6, verse 45, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus is addressing the matter of an evil tree and a good tree by the fruit you will know it, he says. And so when you open up your mouth, your mouth will reveal what your tree is like. <laughs> your mouth will tell others what is the true tree that you carry. It's the fruit of your lips, your, the, what you speak out of your mouth. This is what Jesus is saying. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Each tree will be known by its fruit. So when you hear people saying certain things, which the Bible doesn't support, you know what tree they're coming from. When you see, hear people say certain things that the Bible supports, you know what tree they're coming from. You see, you can't conveniently pick and choose what you want to accept and reject in the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It's the same position we have had over the last several years with the pandemic. What is science? You can't conveniently accept science. You can't accept it for the pandemic or reject it when you come to gender matters. You have to speak the truth. You have to be able to identify what genders there are. You might have your own opinion, but you do not have your own facts. And so the scripture tells us each tree is going to be known by its fruit. And then Jesus goes on to establish this fact. He says that we are going to be justified or condemned by your mouth, by your words. And so our lips is critically important that we pay attention 
to what we say. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 18 that we are going to eat the fruit of our lips. It says in that portion of scripture that the, the mouth, we, we speak it so critically important. I'm going to turn to it. You, you, you give me just a minute and I'm going to go to it because I want, I want to read I want to read exactly what it says so that we are able to know specifically what the Bible says about the matter uh, as it relates to our mouth. The scripture tells us that uh, we'll speak this word from our lips. And let me read it first of all uh, from the King James Version. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18. I want to make sure I, I get it right. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let me repeat those two verses quickly. A man's belly that is your your entire sustenance, your your very well-being, your life is going to be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth and with the increase of your lips you shall be filled. Why? Because death and life lie in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruit of it. Hence, we know that it is critically important for us to know exactly what the word of God is telling us what the word of God is saying and to become experts at using the word of God. It is our weapon. What are you going to do? You got to change your paradigm. You got to change your thinking in order to change your speech. This is what Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, that's the mind of the individual, you're going to talk, you're going to speak. So if you have been thinking along a particular uh, line, you're going to have to change it. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our mind has to be reset, reprogrammed back to what God's intent was originally. And he says through his prophet Isaiah in the 55th chapter, he watches over his word to perform it. In the 20th verse of 100, Psalm 103, the Bible tells us that the angels hearken to the voice of his word. No voice, no hearkening, no word, no action. Give your angels, give the angels something to do by announcing, speaking, proclaiming, pronouncing the word of God from your lips. Very important. It's not, not enough just to think it. It's necessary to speak it, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Well, I pray that today this message has been a strengthening to you, an encouragement to you, an encouragement not only to get into the word and meditate upon it, read it, and, and think about it, and ponder it with the help of the Holy Spirit and the other helps that you have. I'm not talking about books about the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible. Not get into the books about the Bible, but get into the Bible. Thy word, not thy books about the Bible. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. And so I pray that this message has been a strength and encouragement to you to let you know that today you are God's legislative authority agents upon the earth to bring his kingdom into the presence of humanity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I pray that the Spirit of God will stir in within your heart a desire for you to know the Word, a desire for you to come into control of the Word, to come into a better use of the Word, a greater understanding of your position in Christ, where you're seated in heavenly places in Him, so that you can use that Word of authority. He has given you the right to speak. That is God's will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for being with us on this channel today. And our prayer indeed is that you will graduate from a place of training so that when you enter into the area of warfare, you will become greater in the use of the weapons as you have been trained to do so. Acquire that knowledge. Acquire that wisdom and expertise 
and grasp it with both hands, so to speak, and make sure the word of God dwells inside of you richly. Until the next time that we're together, it's been a pleasure sharing this moment with you. And we appreciate you taking the time to be with us here in our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So until the next time we come together, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his protection, and his provision. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, great day, wherever you are. God bless.